Hey everyone, this is Kodemic, and welcome to my quick tour of my Commodore 64. This has been in my family since the mid-80s when my dad first got it. It was his first computer. Uh, now, obviously, these are very iconic computers uh, made by Commodore International. It's uh, certified by Guinness as the highest-selling computer of all time, with uh, estimates between 10 and 17 million. Now, I know that's kind of a big range there, but Commodore never released exact specifics on that. But uh, again, a very iconic computer. I'm going to be going over a little about what the hardware is. Uh, maybe I could show some of the software in a future video. But uh, so this is mainly just going to be the uh, hardware tour. So let's get started. So now we're taking a look at the back of the uh, Commodore 64 here. Uh, here's the expansion slot. Uh, here we have the uh, RF connection, so uh, this is where you'd output to a TV. If you had a monitor, here's the uh, serial port where you'd output to the monitor. Uh, the serial port for the uh, floppy drive here. Uh, the uh, cassette port here for use with a data set. And then over here we have a uh, user port. Now that's more the uh, customizable slot there. Uh, and you could put programmable cartridges or other interface cards in there. And so that's pretty much what's on the back side here. So now we're on the right side of the Commodore 64 here, taking a look at the uh, controller inputs and the uh, on switch here. So these two controller inputs, say you were playing Pac-Man, you could plug in the joystick, or if there's a two-player game, you could use uh, port 1 and port 2 for the uh, respective players there. Then we have the on switch. It's a very thick switch to move. That's all I can really describe it as. You kind of have to press hard on that, and uh, there's not much movement to that. And then we have the uh, power input. Now I do have all the cables for this, but I thought it'd be kind of messy to uh, try to pull all those out in the video. And uh, when I make a video on me actually maybe turning this on with a monitor, I'll uh, show how to uh, plug all that in. So from the little bit I've really gotten to use this keyboard, I have to say it's one of the more comfortable ones I've ever gotten to use. Now what's really popular with game gamers nowadays is those mechanical keyboards with the switches underneath so you really get that tactile feedback. And that's the style of keyboard this actually has. So if I just go and kind of mash some keys on there, you can really feel or hear just how springy it is. It just has this really nice feeling. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of scroll across here so we can see what the uh, keyboard really looks like here. Obviously, the uh, top numerical row, you could change the uh, cursor color, I would assume, if you had a color TV back in the day. Black, white, red, cayenne, purple, green, blue, yellow. Uh, RVS, I'm not entirely sure what that is. So if we take a closer look at some of these uh, keys here, you can see it kind of has its own look to it, the uh, actual font style on that. And if just kind of a quick channel thing here, it's actually what the uh, new Codemic font is based off of that I'll be rolling out soon. Uh, there's actually a font online called Commodore, and obviously it looks a lot like this. So just kind of a cool little nod to the past that I like to do in some of my uh, channel themes here. Restore, return, uh, control home. So if we take a closer look a little farther to the right here, we can see the uh, power indicator up here. Then we have F1 through F7 here. Um, it's kind of interesting how they did F1, and then there's a sub F2, F3, F4, uh, just kind of a way to save space, I guess. And then also, if we look closer here, uh, some more kind of unusual symbols you don't have built into a, uh, keyboard nowadays, uh, yeah, they did have the at sign, though, that's kind of surprising, I doubt you did too much emailing on this, though. Just very cool, just a very beautiful keyboard. It's hard to describe, I hope the video can capture that. It's kind of a deeper brown color, and then the actual case of the Commodore is the uh, really beige. That's what most computers were back in the day. And then what really pops on here is that iconic Commodore logo, Commodore 64, with kind of the uh, rainbow candy stripe there. It reminds me a lot of what's on some of the uh, classic Polaroid cameras that I've taken a look at in the past here. Uh, so let's see what else we can find that's interesting about this Commodore. So sorry for the uh, little shakiness here. I'm actually holding the Commodore on its side so it's not resting on the keyboard. But we're actually taking a look at the uh, label that's on the bottom. Commodore model number is 64. Very creative. Uh, serial number, uh, 
Attempted person or repair by unauthorized persons voids the warranty. I think this may be a little out of warranty anyway, considering the uh, Commodore International Company doesn't like actually exist anymore. Uh, certified FCC stuff and another FCC ID. Uh, very cool, and again, the uh, classic Commodore logo up top there. And then if we uh, pan out here and look a little to the side, there's just a lot of ventilation over here and uh, just the feet that the uh, Commodore rests on. Uh, very simple design for its time, and even now, extremely simple. I'm sure as time goes on, uh, working Commodore 64s will be harder and harder to come by, so I can just really appreciate that I have a working one in near perfect condition. Uh, all I need is a uh, computer monitor to get it to work, and then I can really start to do some neat things. Maybe I'll uh, try to make a program on it or something. We'll make a YouTube client for the Commodore 64. How's that sound? Well, this has been Codemic, and I hope you enjoyed this quick look at this iconic piece of computing history, this uh, Commodore 64. Uh, in a few weeks here, I'll try to do a uh, video on some software. I know I have some maybe games. I know I have Pac-Man at least for this, so uh, that could be interesting. I also have a uh, joystick, uh, and I'm not sure if the uh, software is still going to work or not. I haven't tested the floppy drive, so hopefully that does work. Uh, everything seems to be in good condition. Uh, so this has been Codemic, and this is Tech Story. I hope you enjoyed this vintage tour. Uh, look forward to more content in the future. If you're a uh, fan of the Abandoned History series, uh, we'll have more episodes of that coming out. And again, there's going to be some other uh, guest narrators on the channel. Uh, just really, this has probably been my favorite video I've made so far. Just this awesome piece that I'm so glad I own now. Uh, so thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, and I'll see you all really soon.